Naomi Oreskes, there's a uh, refrain heard frequently these days, I'm not a scientist. Well, it's yet another variation on the theme of denial because it's basically saying, I don't know. It's another form of doubt mongering. And I don't have to know. The implication is, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. Is there climate change? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. So it's just another way of perpetuating the doubt mongering uh, strategy that's been going on for a long time. I just wanted to respond to one thing that, that um, well, actually, I wanted to respond to a lot of things that, that Joe said, <laughs> but I'll just respond to one uh, since time is short. Um, so I'm a historian of science, and one of the things that I notice a lot of times people will use the word history to refer to the last 30 years. But the history is <laughs> actually a little bit older than that. And one of the things that we know is that scientists haven't always behaved the way they behave now, and they haven't always assumed the things that we sometimes assume about how we have to speak or, the, or what our relationship would, should be with publics. And one of the things that I have studied myself in my own work is that in the late 19th and early 20th century, there was a great tradition of scientists, particularly Earth scientists, of reaching out to the public. In the mid-19th century, the British Association would have public meetings in which thousands and thousands of ordinary mm -hmm. British citizens would come to hear lectures on geology. Mm -hmm. In the late 19th century, in London, at the Royal Institution, thousands of people would come to hear Michael Faraday lecture on electricity and magnetism. And in the early 20th century, it was extremely common for American geologists and other scientists to write popular books. And nobody thought that they weren't good scientists. One of my favorite examples is William Bowie, for whom we have a Bowie medal and a Bowie lecture here at the American Geophysical Union. And he was the head of the US Coast and Geodetic Survey, so he was a geodesist. That's a word most people don't even know what it means. Uh, for those of us who know what geodesy is, it's the science of studying the shape of the Earth. Uh, it's a pretty technical field. It's not the kind of thing that most of us would think would lend itself to popular presentations. William Bowie used to do a Sunday radio program on geodesy. <laughs> Now, if you can make geodesy fun, you can make anything fun. <laughs> so that just shows that we make certain assumptions about what's possible and not possible that are actually wrong. And I think we need to broaden our own perception about what it is we do and what's possible and to realize that just because it's been a certain way for the last 10 or 20 or 30 years doesn't mean it has to be that way. Mm -hmm. And we can still be great scientists, yeah. but we can talk to the public too. Right. Can you be a great scientist and also social activist? Naomi Oreskes, you went to the climate march. Some people think that some scientists have crossed the line into activism and that that jeopardizes their science. Well, is anyone who thinks that has never thought about Albert Einstein <laughs> or Niels Bohr. I mean, some of the greatest scientists of the 20th century became very active after 1945 in speaking out in public about the threat that nuclear weapons represented to the future of mankind. And I don't think anybody ever said that Albert Einstein's theory of relativity lost credibility because he spoke up about the dangers of atomic <laughs> weapons.